So in case you missed it, Chantelle finally gave us an apartment tour. In this video, she'll show us about 90% of the one bedroom apartment where she currently lives with Salah. Or does she? After taking a virtual look around, I personally had a bunch of questions, so I pulled up some research and I'm including it in this video as well. Now I've never lived in Kuwait before, but I did find a bunch of YouTubers who had. Mainly, they were expats who were there for teaching, and they were very candid in their vlogs about apartment living and what it's like to be in Kuwait in general. I also read several articles about what it's like to live in Kuwait as a Westerner, and I'll include links for everything in the description box. But let's get to that tour. This is the front door area. Right, and here is Salah's gaming station. All right, we have a TV here with the fireplace on it. You know how I like to put that in the background. Something cozy about it, especially winter, even if it is Kuwait. We have our sofas here. Longer, bigger sofa here. That's the central air control. This was on the window when we got it, and it's kind of like a weird window to in between. It's outside, but it's like inside. So we don't really use it because we always have the AC on. These are chocolate croissant cheese puffs. It has like a feta cheese inside with like a croissant. These are amazing. I've never tried these until now. They're called Pop Pop and they're like sweet corn flavor corn snacks. They're so good. Some Kinder Maltesers, Reese's, some Kinder Kit Kat, hazelnut chocolate. Help yourself guys. There's also a roll under here of this plastic and it's used as kind of like a tablecloth, disposable tablecloth, I guess. Very custom here. You can eat on the ground with it. Okay, so I had to stop for a second and look up this plastic tablecloth roll thing. It is available, pretty widely available in Kuwait, and it's not that expensive for a package of three rolls. And as per the description, it's perfect for a number of festivities, celebrations, and summer picnics. So to me, this is sort of like vinyl tablecloths that you can buy at Walmart. All right, here's the light switches for the bathroom. Here's the bathroom door. It has like a key for a lock. All right, here's the bathroom. At a glance, we have a fan here. I'm put my, we have some bathroom crocs because the floor can get wet. Because as you can see, the shower is in the bathroom, like there's no tub. So the water drains in this drain, we lift the cap. I did step on it, so it's cracked. <laughs> it's like in the way, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> um, we have the bidet hose and the toilet. This is a foot soaker. And here we have the toiletries for the shower in the corner. The sink. Um, hello. Hi. And this thing is better than a mop. It basically like squeegees the water into the drain after a shower and it helps the floor dry much quicker. Here in the dryer here and the laundry soap up there we have the gas tank for the stove more laundry fa uh, fabric softener here's the gas stove I wanted to pause here and really focus in on that gas stove is this really as common as foodie says it is because you know, we need to take everything she says with a grain of salt. Um, so I'd like to introduce you to another YouTuber, Amy Rebecca, and she was an expat teacher from the UK living in Kuwait. And here she is telling us a little bit about that setup. 
you buy these like bottles of gas and then you go in and attach them to your cooker and that's how the gas works and this made me very uncomfortable I'm sure they've checked it I'm sure it's safe but the idea of having an entire bottle of gas next to a cooker that you have to install yourself seems like you could die all it takes is to just not plug something in correctly and either you poison yourself to death in your sleep or you go to like the cooker and you blow up the entire apartment building like it's a big responsibility to have to install your own gas every few months all right guys so now that i showed you our kitchen i'm gonna show you some of the bedroom all right let's go we have like a cute key to lock it if we need to so this is like the lighting here we have a window but we keep this drawn this closed because we have a neighbor in front of us so it's part of the bed we have some personal things on this side of the room that we don't want to reveal to you guys but here we have our tv entertainment area some candles down there we have a base and a sound bar for movies So in comparison, let's take a look at Connie Walcott, another lovely YouTuber who's showing us around her apartment on a teacher salary in Kuwait. Her one bedroom is probably closer to what Foodie's living in right now. What I've learned is that furnished apartments, including dishes and pots and pans, are generally included in employment contracts for teachers. Now what you'll see here is that her guest bathroom, which is adjacent to the dining room, does indeed have that open shower plan. Now I've seen these before, they're actually pretty convenient, um, but the one I experienced was at a resort beach hut in Thailand. So to the rest of the world, this is not entirely uncommon. Connie's kitchen is much bigger than Chantal's and it features an outside view, which is lovely. You'll notice that she also has a fully functioning electric stove and oven combination which was probably purchased by her school. This is a great example of the sort of welcome setup that an employer would give to an expat who comes to Kuwait to work. All right, so this is the bedroom. I found this apartment tour on TikTok. And it looks pretty luxurious, by Chantal standards anyway. Look at that view. That's one thing that I find interesting about Chantal's apartment tour. They don't have any outward facing windows so we can see outside or get any sort of natural light. That's a little strange, don't you think? Even though this is a fancier building, this apartment also has the washer in the kitchen and a much smaller setup. It has two bedrooms and very Western style bathrooms. So no open shower plan here. So I don't know about you, but I find it more interesting that there's stuff that Foodie isn't showing us rather than what she has shown us, if that makes sense. Why would she bother to hide over 90% of the bedroom when she knows that's just going to raise questions? As for all the questions we have about some of the quirkier features of the apartment, like the gas stove or the bathroom setup, they all point to a sort of cheaper option of living. And that's perfectly fine. You live where you can afford. I get it. I get the feeling that Foodie's a little embarrassed about how they're living, and she doesn't want to deal with any of the feedback. She could have avoided all of this by being upfront in the very beginning, but that wouldn't be Foodie's way. Drop me a line in the comments and let me know what you think. I'd love to hear from you.